Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Craft, and this is The Leather Element. If you have a question for us, drop it in the comment box below. Or if you have a good idea for a leather element, drop it in that same box. Now this week we're going to talk about keepers, or belt loops. It's this small piece on a belt or strap that's going to hold that tongue. Now, for those of us who are new, this can be a little bit frustrating. But at the same time, for those of us with a little experience, say we've got a beautiful 8-9 to nine ounce belt weight leather, we're going to strap a belt out. Well, that same leather is not going to make a great keeper. It's going to be huge. Or on the other side, say we've got a veg tan. We're going to make a beautiful veg tan belt, but we want a matching keeper. Super easy to do on both accounts. And also, we've got a cool tip. It's going to make a very clean, very square keeper. So let's step over here first off. Look at just a couple of common widths and lengths. Hands down, the best way to set a keeper is with our little wonder. Because we have a throat and an anvil, it's going to set a staple. So I can bring that around, staple it. Very clean, very professional looking. All right, we don't have one. So, width and length. First off, width I typically will go one half inch wide for a one and a half inch belt. We drop down to a one inch strap. I'll bounce down to maybe three eighths of an inch. And thinner, I may go down to a quarter inch, give or take, but your keeper, your call. Length. Typically, we're going to work with a four to five ounce or a five to six ounce leather. To me, that's a good weight for a keeper. It's going to bend nicely. When we rivet that on the back, it's going to be nice and flat. So therefore, on our lengths, for a one and a half inch belt, I'm going to go with four and a half inches in length. Now, this is four to five, five to six. For a one inch strap, down to three and a half inches. And again, lower than that, maybe three, two and three quarters. Okay, so let's start right here. We sell this English bridle and it is a gorgeous, gorgeous leather. It's one of my favorites. But notice how thick that is. That's an 8.9, maybe a 9.10. It's not going to make a great keeper. That would be huge. So we're going to have to skive this. And this is a little bit difficult because this is not one of my favorite tools. It can be done, but it's not easy. All right, with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bite into my leather. Then I'm going to lift the handle. I'm going to use these two fingers. And I'm going to do my best to keep that blade as parallel to my cutting surface or my work surface as I can. I might pop out. I can certainly dig back in. But also, too, notice I've got more than enough length here because I only need four and a half, but I'm going to have to hold this. So let's go ahead and bite in, okay? I'm going to lift my tool a little bit, and I'm going to do my best to stay as horizontal as I can. Notice it didn't work all that well, but we can always come back in and keep working that. There we go. All right, we're a little thick here. Let's see if we can't trim that a little bit. There we go. Okay, so it's not full on perfect, but it'll work for us. Once we bend this around, we'll never notice that we're a little bit heavier here, a little bit lighter there. All right, so let's move that mess out of the way. We're gonna cut this since we're doing a one and a half inch strap. Let's cut this, gonna take off that rough end. There we go, drop in four and a half inches, okay? Well, that doesn't look bad now. So let's bend this around. We're going to drop in a rivet. So I'm going to use the second from my smallest hole on my revolving. And just right down there at the end, punch in two holes. Okay, cool. That one's ready to go. With the veg tan, this is great. If we've got four to five or five to six, which the four to five is a common weight. So I almost always have this in my shop. All I have to do is strap out, drop that down four and a half, bend it over, and drop in a hole. Uh, let's get that evil. There we go. Get that equal. Good enough. All right, so we've got our two keepers ready to go. Let's jump over to our quartz and knock in two rivets. For our rivet, we're going to use a small double cap, 3 16 my favorite rivets. But here's the thing. With this, we're going to have to set a rivet on that. So I'm going to use the anvil from our four-piece snap setter set, and I can bend that around, easily set a rivet, no problem. The problem is, so when we get down to three-quarter inch straps, or we have to make a keeper for a half inch strap. We're gonna to have to get a little creative. This is just our setter for the copper rivets. So I can slide my keeper up on that, set a rivet there. But if we're even smaller, again, creativity, I can slide a keeper on this and set my rivet there. So again, we gotta kinda of look around when we're getting to the smaller straps. One and a half inch, no problem. All right, so let's drop our keeper face down little piece of leather to protect the keeper from the marble or the quartz. Take a small double cap. That's a 3 16 
Lay it in, drop that in, drop in a cap. Okay, there we go. So easy enough, concaved in on our setter. All right, well, there's a pretty cool little keeper. It's gonna work for us. All right, jump over to this. Same thing, drop in a small double cap. Bring that around and a cap snaps down nicely. Great thing about double caps is they have a crimp so I can drop that snap on or drop the, the rivet head on. It's not gonna pop off, roll around. That's very frustrating. There we go. Okay, so that's a pretty good keeper. Perfect, no, but it looks good. It's gonna work nicely. Now, here's a cool trick. With the veg tan, what I'll do is I'll strap out a piece, maybe, I don't know, 36, 40 inches long, depending on my piece of leather, but that leather's gonna go to waste. So what I'll do is I'll just cut out a bunch of keepers and I can simply make a form. This is just plywood, but the cool thing here, so I can make my keeper, now I can drop that in water, wet it, and simply slide that on my form. What happens is I get a very cool square keeper and I can make these for multiple sizes. In fact, there's one and a half inch there. Now I can take these off as needed, dye them in whatever color I'm using, drop these back on, let it dry, and then hit my top coat while it's on my form. Makes the whole thing very easy. Well, I hope that's good information for you. I hope it helps you with maybe a problem spot in your shop. Hope your keepers are beautiful. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.